Hello everyone, I'm Derek with the PMY Professional Team. We're at Seagraph 2023, and I'm here with Eric from Puget Systems visiting their booth. So Eric, uh, first off, I guess we kick it off. Uh, how's Seagraph going so far at another like a live event? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's awesome to be back out here. Um, Seagraph is, is, such a, is such a great conference because of the fact that it's got that, um, it's not as big as, as you know, a, a, an NAB or anything like that, but it's yeah. just so specialized. Yes. Um, and so you really get to meet the people that are like in the trenches doing the work. Yes. Um, and I think that as a company, and I think PMY is the same, that uh, as you know, as a company that really values itself on uh, creating products that actually solve the problems for people, like you have to know what that work looks like. And there's yes. no better place than when you're out here with 10,000 people that actually do that work. An actual so. user of it, agree. Yeah. Um, so also too, Seagraph, um, big, big keynote from NVIDIA. So uh, any takeaways on your end from Puget Systems uh, from the keynote today? Absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the, the keynote was phenomenal. I mean, as, yeah, as Jensen was. does, you know, um, but uh, but yeah, the keynote was great, um, and I think that the the announcement from Nvidia about the essentially the you know the democratization of the different AI tools, I mean that's phenomenal for for everyone involved, you know, um, and I think that you know the integration of using things like uh, like OpenUSD, where like it really does democratize things because you can just use whatever tools you're already using. Um, I think that's really going to accelerate things, and it's going to bring people into the industry that may not have been in the industry to begin with because. Great. I can speak to myself. I'm not a creative person, yeah. but to have tools like that where you could essentially become a creative person, or you could become a programmer, you can become yeah. these things that were uh, that were kind of gate kept from you before. So yeah. I think it's really, really exciting. Yeah, yeah no, I, that's, I agree as well. It's like yeah, AI, the future of it, generative AI, everything like that is like the, the key focus right now. And I guess kind of segue into a in Puget System. I know yeah. you offer you know workstations. So tell us a little more about maybe like Puget Systems and um, your latest workstations. I'm, I know you have a, a bunch of beautiful systems. Here on yeah, the yeah. display, um, and also with the, the latest, uh, you know, Ada Lovelace uh, GPU. So, yep. kind of like, expand on that. What do you have to offer? Yeah, yeah, and you know, like I mentioned earlier, kind of our, our, our guiding light um, for for the company um, is that we're trying to find places where we can actually solve a problem for people. So, we're not trying to build thousands of off-the-shelf systems or anything like that. We really want to enable people that are trying to create um, and and are running into bottlenecks. Um, okay. And so, because of that, that's why we find ourselves in places like the media and entertainment industry because that's places where they actually have that need. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so, you know, we're, we're focused on customizing workstations specifically for people that are, you know, in the media and entertainment industry, people doing VFX work, people doing editing, colorists, uh, motion graphics artists, people in game development, you know. Um, the, and and to, to be able to make that distinction between those different industries, we have to have uh, the knowledge. Um, yes. And I guess that we have a, uh, one of the kind of the distinguishing factors, I guess, to Puget Systems is that we have a labs team uh, on site who's building benchmarks, who's actually using the software and finding, finding out how the software and the different ways of using the software leverage hardware in general. Um, and, and then we're able to use that information to say, okay, well, if you're doing this type of work, this is the configuration that you need. And a really good example of that is actually the demo that That's we have here. I was gonna say, um, if you can spin on there, this, this demo is really awesome. Again, the booth looks phenomenal. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, uh, going a little bit of this, I see that you have some some green screen and then you have some of it going into anime and all that. What, what yeah. is this all about? Yeah, so this was uh, so this was a project, um, a video released by a uh, YouTube channel called Corridor Digital. Um, they, you know, their focus over the last decade, at least, I think, uh, has been, you know, on high VFX, uh, uh, you know, production and videos. Um, but this was really interesting uh, because they produced an anime. Um, they don't have any animators on staff, uh, so they produced an anime without actually doing any animation, uh, which is wild to think. Yeah. Um, now, so this this project here specifically, um, they uh, it was a little controversial uh, because of the fact that they did take the art style from, I believe it was Vampire Hunter. Um, they took the uh, you know they took a bunch of images from that, trained a trained a model on that uh, on that animation style, and then went through and did took all these different shots on a green screen, and then took the model that they had uh, they had trained and applied it to all of those individual frames on the green screen and then pulled that back into Resolve to actually apply uh, all the different effects in the background and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I mean, it was, you know, going back to what I was saying about, uh, you know, having to understand how the workflow, uh, yeah, how that operates. Um, and, and how it leverages hardware, they came to us um, and said, hey, we want to do this, I, like we have this idea, we want to do this thing, how do we do it? 
Um, and so, you know, we started doing testing internally and figuring out like, okay, well, if you're using stable diffusion this way, then you're probably going to need, you know, this amount of VRAM and stuff. And that's really doing all that testing was how we landed on the, uh, the 6000 ADA. Uh, that, that was what they were going to need uh, because they were trying, you know, they were taking these, I think, 1080p or 4K images. Okay. Um, and they have this huge, massive amount of them and they're trying to train the models off of those. Uh, and, you know, to be able to do that, they needed the VRAM from, from the 6000 ADA to be able to accomplish that. Yeah, and, that, and that's also, that's going to ask too, because I know another addition to Kino and kind of throughout the, the media and social media, um, there was some other products announced. Mm. So we had the RTX 5000 ADA, the 4000 ADA, and I'm sorry, the 4500 ADA. Yeah, yeah. Is that something you'll be offering in your, your systems as well? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that uh, I think that that's going to be actually really crucial to to furthering that kind of mission and that goal from NVIDIA of you know democratizing AI, yeah. uh, because right now the 6000 ADA being the entry point for that yes. is definitely a bit of a steep entry point. Yes. So you know adding those adding those cards where you know maybe they're not doing anything as crazy as what Corridor is doing here, yeah. um, but they are getting into that AI development those cards are going to be the perfect opportunity, perfect jumping point to be able to get into that. Yeah, and that's where I kind of vision it as, like, I call, like, the full stack. Because, like you said, yep. you were stuck at the 6,000, and then the recently launched 4,000 SFF, and kind of you had that, that in-between missing. Yep. So today, uh, through Seagraph, we had that along with the L40S. So. Absolutely, yeah. So I can't, I can't wait to actually be able to, you know, get those cards into uh, our lab scene that I was talking about earlier, have them be able to actually test those cards in these different workflows, and, and you can bet that, you know, the second that we have those and we do that testing, that we'll be publishing that information on our website for everyone to see exactly how each of those cards performs for those different industries. Okay, and I'm sure just for everyone you know, like they can uh, find Puget Systems on social media oh, yep. and PugetSystems.com. PugetSystems.com, go to our articles, um, and that's where you can find all the testing that we do, uh, all the benchmarking, uh, all the benchmarks themselves. We put those all freely out there for people to use, so if they wanted to see, hey, how does my system perform against these new cards that, uh, that have just been released, okay. they can actually run those benchmarks on their own system and compare against the results that we have up on the website for the new cards, and they can see exactly Perfect. what the performance benefits it would be awesome well eric thank you so yeah. much for your time thank Absolutely. you for being a pny partner we appreciate it um so that's it for this interview stay tuned for more c route 2023 content and we'll see you in the next video